Hi and welcome to this DCP web HTML5 and CSS beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to look at the margin CSS element. So let's open up our web browser and we'll open up Notepad++. We'll get our project, the Sun project, and we'll drag the index into here and we'll drag the index file into Notepad++. And in CSS, we only drag this CSS. Remember, we made this backup, this example when we was experimenting in the last tutorial. So in this one, we just want to drag the original CSS into here. We're going to do some editing to it. Okay, so I want to explain margins. And a good example would be to use this particular image here. Now, if you remember, the last thing we did was we was playing around with the positioning, uh, this, this positioning element. If we were to set this to 100, for example, then the image would move according to the position, the specific position uh, that we want to place it. So what we want to do is set that back to zero for now. Refresh and the image will sit in its original position here. And I showed you this commenting, right? So we want to delete this particular comment. So the star and the slash, we want to get rid of it here. And we want to get rid of it at the top here. So just delete this one or cut this one and paste it at the bottom here. So now all of this content here will be um, commented out, it will be ignored. So when we refresh, we'll see the image just stays in its original position. Now, here's a little um, a little test for you for yourself. If you wanted to make that image sit in the content here, if you remember we used the float function before to do that. So if you want to try and do that, I'll give you a few seconds to just type that code in to make it float on the right hand side here. So that this content will move up and then the image will be placed right here. So give that a quick go. What would you type in here to do that? Okay, you can see a good example of this right above. So if you look at sometimes when you're trying to figure out what you've got to do, take a look at what you've written before. You can see here float right and you've got float left. So these are these two sections, right? One to float to the right, one to float to the left. So let's type in here float right. And refresh. Now we've got the image on the right hand side. And if you remember, we added some, um, uh, in a previous tutorial, we added um, padding to give some spacing on the side, right? But today we're going to look at margins. So instead of using the padding, we can use a margin and we can set the margin. So we just type in margin and we can set it to 10 pixels, for example, right? And if I refresh it, the image now has 10 pixels all the, around, all the way around the edges. You can see that, right? So if I uh, resize this, let's resize this. Let's see here. You can see it will maintain those 10 pixels all the way around the edge. Now let's try something a little different. Let's go back to the HTML code here. And we've got our image sitting right at the top here. So we're going to select that piece of content and press Control X or cut on your keyboard, Control X. And we want to move that image so that it sits inside of these two paragraphs. So let's move it to this span tag here, right? right here so just after this closing span tag here we're going to press Control v so now our image sits within the content itself so let's refresh that now you can see the text the reason why i've done that is you can see the 10 pixel gap around the edge a bit clearer now right as i resize you can see the image will stay and it's wrapped inside of the text this this first paragraph so that's a good example of showing you that 10 pixel gap there so what if we wanted to have specific margins? Because right now it's just 10 pixels all the way around. It doesn't care. Just give me 10 pixels, stick it around the edge, and it's job done. Because that's what the, the um, requirement is here. So what we can do is we can do something like 10 pixels here. So we do 10 and 10 and refresh. Let's just check I've done that right. set it to let's try and set it to 100 something bigger here now we can see it a bit clearer so 
um, basically what this is what this is doing here is saying give me 10 pixels at the top and bottom and 100 pixels on the left and right hand side so that's what that represents here so if we went and put 200 pixels here I'm just trying to I'm using big numbers here to, to show you on the screen what's going on we don't, we don't normally do this um, and it's going around clockwise right so each time we en enter an element and if I did 400 pixels here refresh it starts at the top so you can see 10 pixels that's the top and it's going around clockwise around this direction so it's 10 pixels here 100 pixels here then at the bottom it's 200 pixels and then on the left side it's 400 so it's top right bottom and then left in that order so think of it just going clockwise all you got to do is remember the clock right clocks always go around this direction if you remember that then you remember the positioning of these elements here how they affect the content on the page so i've used something quite ridiculous to be honest you'll never really do something like that but just to illustrate you can see how the margins are now working a bit more clearly All right so let's set this something sensible um the top is 10 so that's fine this is going to be the right side and the right side we want to set to zero so there's no pixel so it's flush along the edge of this content now right sits nicely then this will be the bottom so the bottom we should set to 10 as well and refresh and then the right hand side will set to 10 as well and refresh now we've got the content so this was almost the same as just doing the margin on its own but now we can control um, this right side specifically um, which allows us to have the content sit flush against the edge right which is what we wanted you can see we've got this gap here but that's just maintained by generally the browser itself right here okay so Let's reduce this to here. So there's another way to do this. Um, let's let's comment this out for a second. So we'll just do backslash star, and then we'll go here, and then do another star and a backslash like this, or forward slash. And then we can type in margin. And as we well, let's in fact let's just refresh this and see it move back without no margins, right? So that's its default state. So we've commented this out. Um, if we did margin dash left 10 pixels and refresh, then we just get this left margin. Now we're controlling that one element. In the example above, we could control all four and we had to declare all four, right? Like this. Normally, this is the best way to do it because then you're not having to type in. You know, the other way to do it would be margin left, margin right. Well, we don't even need a margin right, so um, we need a margin top, right? 10 pixels. And then a margin bottom 10 pixels. And refresh so really what we've done is we've created these individual elements to represent what we did we've done here so these are kind of interchangeable right you can do either one it doesn't matter it's going to have the same effect but sometimes you want finite control yeah although both of these give you the same amount of control the main difference is in this one you have to declare all the four positions but in this example below we only have to declare three because we don't need the right side here. We don't need it. But in this version, we have to declare what the value would be here because that's its position in this in the elements here. You have to put, you have to tell it that this right side will be zero pixels. So that's the difference between these two. And that's pretty much about it. That's how margins work. So margins are useful if you want to add gaps, but they're, they're not always um, specifically used for this particular purpose. Right. If you just want to add some spacing up the top here for example just on blank spacing then we can use margins to do that we can set the we can set margins think of margins a bit like uh, in a document so sometimes if we open up LibreOffice for example 
these are margins down the side, right? At the top, this is normally where you see margins in a document like this. These side down the sides here, for example, and at the top and at the bottom. Um, so that's margin. That's another example of margins, but in a document, a printed document. Okay. So that's pretty much it about margins. I think what we'll do is leave this content here. We'll save it because then we can go and experiment with this later. When we come to more tutorials, we'll look at margins and how we can use them in uh, building more. When we come to build a bigger site, a proper site. We use margins quite a lot. Okay, that's the end of this tutorial. That was just a quick explanation on margins. And I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial. Thank you.